Welcome to the Exam Study Expert Podcast, helping you ace your exams at school and university through the psychology of high performance and the science of studying smarter, not harder. It's my pleasure to introduce your host, the Cambridge-trained memory psychologist and exam success coach, William Wadsworth. Hello and welcome back to the Exam Study Expert podcast. There sometimes just feel like there are never enough hours in the day to get everything done, am I right? To help you out with that, today I'm counting down my top 12 time management hacks to help you get the most from the time that's available to each of us every day so that you can get your work done and still have a decent work-life balance and a decent night's sleep. Here we go. In at tip number 12, unplug. Turn off the phone, log out of your emails, disconnect from the Wi-Fi on your laptop, go on airplane mode, turn the whole laptop off if you can. Basically, the first step to making the most of your time is making sure that the time you have available for your work is actually, well, available for your work and not spent fielding a stream of pings and notifications and interruptions. So my strong advice here is cut out all the tech distractions that you can. And if you're able, try even going somewhere where there won't be so many human distractions as well. Like a library is often a great place where you can work in quiet. Tip number 11 is batching. So you can save a ludicrous amount of time by doing certain tasks less frequently. That's called batching. You do them in batches rather than spreading them out and doing them more often. Some of my favourite examples are doing email, laundry and shopping. So check your email once per day, max, when you're busy. Just deal with it all in one go. For me, I often did it right after lunch. I'd go and have lunch and then I'd come back and the first thing I'd do is do my email. And that was the one time in the day I'd worry about emails. It's way more efficient than checking in on your inbox multiple times per day. Uh, And if something big comes up that kind of sucks your attention, you know, one of the big bits of news, uh, you don't then have to spend like the whole day ruminating on it. You know, you've set aside this time, you just deal with it all in one go uh, and you're not continually kind of checking in and kind of bringing up lots of these little things that might be kind of triggering off thought patterns and spent like distracting, hanging around in your brain and distracting you for the rest of the day. But it's not just about email. So same principle for messages in general. Uh, I'd say try and train your friends and family into not expecting instant responses from you on text, WhatsApp, Snapchat, or whatever you use to keep in touch. Uh, Once per day for, for example, WhatsApp might be a bit of a shock to the system uh, of some of you on this. Um, But particularly when things get busy, aiming for that, again, will, will save you a lot of time. Another great example are sort of household chores. So laundry is a good example. It takes roughly the same amount of laundry to do three weeks laundry as one week in a large college or university laundry machine. Uh, So if you've got sufficient clean clothes in the wardrobe, try laundering every three weeks rather than every week. Or if you cook for yourself, make larger quantities of certain meals like soup or pasta sauce uh, and keep the leftovers in the fridge or freezer for a rapidly prepared, nutritious meal on future days. By doing all of these things less frequently, they end up taking up less time out of your day, out of your week overall. Tip number 10 is stack. If you cannot batch a task, then consider whether there's opportunity to stack multiple tasks on top of each other. Now, there are plenty of times when you need total focus on your work. Tip number 12 we started with a moment ago, uh, unplug, when you want to focus strictly on one thing at a time. But you could also look for opportunities to make better use of otherwise spare time or slow time, slack time throughout the day. Adding in audio is a great example, like while you're doing the washing up or running errands or working out even, uh, or or even travelling around college campus or the school campus, um, put in a podcast, listen to a helpful podcast, hello, (laughs) Uh, or, you know, find something, uh, you know, find a kind of uh, educational video on YouTube to, to kind of watch while you're on the bus. If you have time waiting for the bus or the train, could you use an app like Quizlet to practice a few flashcards or keep your flashcard deck in your pocket so you can flip through it and test yourself? When I was revising for my A-levels at the end of senior year at high school, I stuck key data that I needed to know for my exams around the house, especially in places I paused, like by the kettle when making a cup of tea or around the bathroom mirror so I could look at it while brushing my teeth or shaving. But having said that, I would just suggest not taking this one too far. Uh, which is where tip number nine comes in. Tip number nine, take a break. Tip number nine is all about if you want to make the most of your time over the long run, 
You want to be as productive as possible. You can't book your days absolutely ram full solid from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed because you'll just end up burned out and exhausted before too long. You need quality time out to rest, recharge and decompress so that you stay productive in the time that you have available. You can check out episode 38, which I recorded dedicated to the art of a good break schedule to help keep yourself in tip top condition and thereby maximise your daily output of productive work. Even though you're taking more breaks, you get more done because you've got better energy. Related to this point, you might find your need for breaks and downtime changes, particularly as you get closer to big exams or a major assignment deadline and your stress levels start to creep up. Uh, in the previous tip about stacking, I had that idea about putting you know tables or posters up around the house in key locations so you kind of look at them even while you're not at your study desk. That was fine for a while, but as anxiety starts to creep up uh, in the final run up to exams, I found my mental health was greatly improved by actually taking most of the posters around the house down uh, so that I could just relax for a few minutes while making that tea while brushing my teeth rather than worrying about exams in every single waking moment. This is all about finding the balance. Yes, I want you to use your time well. I want you to make the most of the time available, but you're also not a robot. <laughs> you need time to change your batteries else they'll run flat. Tip number eight is using the prime time. So talking of maximizing your use of time, think about when in the day you have the most energy and match the tasks accordingly. There's a really nice concept I like called biological prime time, uh, which is a term coined by productivity expert and best-selling author Chris Bailey. Here he is to explain for us. So if you cut out everything that fluctuates your energy, if you get a consistent sleep every day, if you don't drink caffeine, if you, uh, you know, don't have too much sugary stuff, so that fluctuates your energy, what you'll find is that there is a natural rhythm to how much energy you have throughout the day. And this is what we kind of mean. We're approaching this idea when we call somebody an early bird or a night owl or, or a lark or, or whatever you know nomenclature that we want to use. Um, that essentially, what the research shows is that, is that there are certain chronotypes, certain patterns that we fall into where our energy fluctuates in predictable ways throughout the day. Knowing how your energy fluctuates allows you to work around these patterns of fluctuation. You're able to ride those energy waves so that when you have more energy, you're able to get more done because you're working on your most important things anyway. And it's episode 29 of the podcast for that full interview with Chris Bailey. So learn when your energy is at its highest and schedule your most cognitively demanding tasks for those periods of the day. Don't waste this prime time when you've got your best energy uh, on mundane stuff like filing or running errands. Tip number seven, track and trace. No, this isn't a National Health Service effort to tackle a viral pandemic. Uh, this is about tracking how you spend your time so that you can trace any potential leaks. You can use a simple app like Toggle for this or treat yourself to a time turner gadget like a Timeula. Or just keep it simple, use a spreadsheet or even just a paper journal. And what you're doing is basically just keeping track of the minutes in the day, the hours in the day uh, and tracking how you spend them. What were you doing in that time? And again, your end result isn't necessarily about building work into every single waking moment. You do want quality time off as well. Again, time you spend recharging your batteries is time well spent. Time you enjoy wasting is not time wasted, to quote Bertrand Russell. Again, we need that balance in our lives. But what this exercise will reveal, you might find there are low value tasks in particular that you spend a disproportionate amount of time on. For example, you might spend a lot of time procrastinating and not really enjoying yourself, but not really getting anything done either, or perhaps checking your emails or responding to messages. This exercise is really nice for revealing what your time thieves are. And then once you've figured that out, you can start to plan what you might be able to do about it. Tip number six, cut. This is a simple one, and it might be a fallout from some of the conclusions from the track and trace exercise just now. What are the activities that you might be able to get rid of? Is there anything you could cut from your life? These are often hard choices to make, but the amount of people I talk to who say things to the effect of, oh, I wish I'd just dropped that class I wasn't into or had the courage to cut back this extracurricular activity that wasn't really doing anything for me at the time, vastly outweighs the number of people that think they quit too soon. 
generally, uh, you know, people listening to the Exam Study Expert podcast, people I talk to tend to be quite ambitious, tend to have quite high standards for themselves. And, you know, we're the sorts of people that don't want to be seen as quitters. We don't want to quit. Uh, but if you've been having doubts for a long time, particularly, and your plate is overflowing, trying to get rid of some of the things from your schedule could be a really smart move because it then gives you more space to succeed in the things you have remaining. Give yourself a better shot by focusing and prioritising. Tip number five is time boxing. This is a simple strategy, but an effective one. Set time limits on the amount of time you spend each day on different tasks. You don't have to do this all the time, but it works as a really nice exercise. Some people like to do it all the time. For me, I kind of do it particularly when I'm up against the clock, up against a strict deadline, or when I'm trying to get my productivity back up to pace, uh, perhaps after a vacation. So time boxing works a bit like a to-do list. You have your kind of task items written down the page in a sensible order, but you add a time limit for each one. So against each of the actions, you write the time you're going to do it in. So for example, first task is reading 9am to 10am. Second task might be plan your introduction after a short break, 10.15am through to 11am. At 11.15am, you make a start on writing your essay up and so on down the page. You have boxes of time, these windows of time set aside for each of these little uh, subtasks within the overall task. And that helps to make sure that you cut your cloth accordingly so that you get each component of that task done within the time you've set uh, available to it. It's a simple upgrade to a regular to-do list, but a really nice trick for keeping you moving at the right pace through a task list or project. As I say, particularly when time is limited, particularly when you've got a, a strict deadline coming up that you need to hit. In at number four, slice of salami, bite of cheese. Here's Brian Tracy. One of the principles is called the salami slice principle, and that's where you just simply slice off one piece of the task and just complete that one piece of the task. And don't worry about completing the whole task. Just take one slice of it and complete it. And another thing uh, is called the uh, Swiss cheese uh, a task. And if you look at a piece of Swiss cheese, it's full of holes. And what you do is you just punch a hole in the task. And that was Brian Tracy from episode 39, sometimes hailed as the father of time management. I really like his perspective here. So thinking about either salami slicing a large project, i.e. biting off chunks of the project in logical order, step one, step two, step three, getting through it one slice at a time. Or if you prefer giving yourself the freedom to go for the Swiss cheese approach and literally start anywhere you like in the project, right the end, go for the beginning, uh, go for something right in the middle, just punch a hole in the task wherever inspiration strikes. As a little bonus cheeky tip to throw in, Brian Tracy is also famous for his eat the frog strategy, uh, in which you start the day with your most off-putting task. You start the day by, as the metaphor goes, eating a live frog, uh, your task that you're most feeling aversion to actually doing, uh, and getting that task out of the way first. It can be a really effective way to get something you don't want to do out of the way and build some really nice momentum to see you through the rest of the day. In at tip number three, we've got study routine. So I love a good daily routine and it's something I help my coaching clients with all the time. If you can get in good habits with your study schedule, it means that you basically have a willpower free way of managing your time because you run your day on autopilot or at least semi-autopilot, perhaps with a few tweaks and modifications uh, as, as you go. If you want some more thoughts on what a good study routine looks like, if you just Google the words study routine, my article on extreme study routine secrets for ambitious students should pop up somewhere near the top of page one, hopefully. You can also listen to a podcast on it. Uh, we covered study routine in some detail back in episode 30. Tip number two is theme days. So sometimes you don't need to do the same task every day. I love this strategy to balance out time spent on different tasks throughout the week without having to do a sort of crazy detailed plan that changes every single week. So you might, for example, say that Mondays are for reading, Tuesdays are for applying to jobs or internships, Wednesdays might be for teaching yourself to code, Saturdays for, might be for writing up lab reports. You come up with these little theme days so that you don't have to decide each day, each week, how you're going to allocate your time, but you still get this overall sensible allocation of kind of the right sort of amount of time to each of the different tasks you've got to do. You don't end up spending your whole week teaching yourself to code and forgetting to do any lab report writing up. 
This works equally well when you're planning your schedule for entire days, like if you're a postgraduate or PhD student and you've got lots and lots of time to, to schedule for yourself, or if you're you know, still at high school and you've got only an hour or two left over after classes and other commitments each night, your theme day approach could dictate just what you do in that hour or two after classes at night. Either way, it, it can work really nicely. And finally, tip number one, have a plan. So bringing this all together, whatever you do, have a plan, whether it's on paper or in a digital calendar or to-do list. Don't carry your ideas and thoughts about how you'll manage your time around in your head. It will make you stressed and you're far more likely to mess up by making the wrong calls on prioritisation. Not writing down your plan basically means you go around spending the whole day trying to remember what's next and often kind of negotiating or renegotiating with yourself to get the priorities right. So whatever approaches you want to take from this to help you plan your time, whether you're adopting a nice regular routine, uh, whether you're trying out theme days, time boxing, uh, a combination of all of these, make sure you're getting your plan out of your head and onto paper or Google Calendar or whatever you're using. Make your life far easier. And with that, that wraps up my top 12 tactics for managing your time and helping you make the most of the 24 hours each day available to all of us. Remember, using these strategies to maximise the time available is only half the battle. The other half is making sure you're using that time well. Uh, and that's where my exam success cheat sheet comes in. You can get a copy at examstudyexpert.com forward slash free tips. Uh, again, that's examstudyexpert.com forward slash free tips. Uh, and if you're studying for exams, remember the new book that came out just at the end of last year, Outsmart Your Studies, is available via the website or via Amazon. Uh, a great read uh, with lots of tips on how to use your time well, particularly if you've got a lot to learn for your exams. That's been proving very popular. Definitely recommend uh, taking a look at that if you're trying to learn your stuff ahead of exam season at the moment. For now, look, thanks again for listening today. Good luck managing your time. I'll look forward to seeing you again next time. For now, wishing you every success as always in your studies. 